In today's episode, we convince an old buddy to take a massive, massive gamble with us. And it creates maybe the most stressful situation in chasing cardboard history. Oh no. I think this is PSA coming. Sorry. Come on in. Thank you. Hey, welcome. All those baseball cards? A lot of them, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got a friend that bought a box. I don't know if it's from you guys, but... Oh, yeah? She said she said that there was a $5,000 card in there. That's a good day. Yeah. That's a real good day. UPS man thinks he might have bought cards from me. That's pretty cool. Okay, so we just got the 1952 Mickey Mantle card back from PSA. And this is from the collection out in West Virginia, John... Harlan, his son-in-law, and I'm a little bum. This is actually, I mean, look, it's the most iconic card in, in sports cards. It came back as PSA Authentic Altered. And if you look on PSA site, the definition of altered is trimming, recoloring, restoration, and or cleaning. And I just don't know if I agree with that. Obviously they're experts, they look at this stuff, but I think I'm gonna call and pitch Harlan on resubmitting this to SGC. It would require us snapping this out of the case and resubmitting it to SGC, but I think it I think it's an SGC one. Hey Harlan, it's Ty. How are you? Sorry to bug you. Lunchtime for you. <laughs> yeah, you caught me right in the middle of it, that's fine. Beautiful. Hey, first things first, how how'd Junior do at the State Fair? I know he was presenting his cards. He didn't play, but you know, make him at the state. Yeah. Well hey man, so I, I wanted to talk to you real quick about the fifty two mantle. So that came back from PSA. And uh, I know we had been going back and forth with a lot of these cards. It came back a PSA authentic altered. Do we know what the alteration was? This is one of those, like, I think it's almost a toss up where it could have got a one, could have got an altered. I think okay. we're probably going to get 16 to 18,000 for this altered. Okay. One thought I have, though, is that we maybe resubmit to SGC. What would be the, <clears throat> the additional cost? already paid to have it created by PSA. So I guess the question is, yeah. you know, what are the benefits? Let's say it comes back, it, you know, we kind of all agreed that it, it was a one. Yep. You know, we're looking at it, it's got that stain on it. Mm -hmm. If it comes back from SGC as a one versus a PSA authentic, what are we talking about? All right, so why would we crack open a 1952 Topps Mickey Mantle? Well, let me break down the simple math for you. So we invested $2,000 with PSA to get this card graded first time around came back a PSA Authentic, which we think values that card around seventeen dollars to $18,000. We wanna get more than that. So we're gonna resubmit to SGC, and we're gonna pay $1,000 to do that, which means we're gonna be all in, invested with grading fees at about $3,000. So what does that mean for us? Well, we think an SGC one will net us around $27,000. So the extra $1,000 gives us a potential eight dollars to $10,000 in, in additional value for that card. For us, it's worth the risk, and obviously it's worth the risk for Harlan too. Let's take a shot. Sounds to me like it's gonna be, like it'd be worth it to try. But who's gonna take it out of the PSA flap? That is the $26,000 question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I've cracked my fair share of, of cases. There, I mean, look, there's obviously a risk with a card like that, but I, I again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even offer this if I didn't feel confident to do it. Okay, well, uh, I'll go do, I'll get it done. Let's go knock it out. Okay. All right, I'll keep hey, you posted. If I don't hear from you, I'll assume it's the worst. That everything went wrong. <laughs> don't call back. If you don't hear from me, it either graded an SGC 5 or it ripped in half when I was cutting it open. <laughs> right, right, right. right. <laughs> now the real pressure begins. Let's go crack this bad boy. Before we get to cracking open the slab, we head to Home Depot to pick up some tools. Okay, so the tool that I like to use is a cutting plier. Uh, obviously, there's lots of choices for cutting pliers, but you're looking for a big enough head to get over the slab. You want to get on bottom of the slab, on top of the slab, deep enough in to be able to crack it, which you'll see here in a minute. Uh, these are both pretty good ones. Ideally, you want a little bit bigger. So I'll keep looking around, but, but diagonal cutting pliers, that is the secret sauce to cracking every slab possible. Every slab known to mankind can be cut with one of these. 
All right, so anytime you're cracking open a slab of a 52 mantle magnitude, you wanna get a couple reps in. Consider this your warm up shot, if you will, before you crack that slab. So I got some slabs that I've been wanting to crack anyway. I got the tools that we went to Home Depot to grab, eight inch angled pliers. We have a chisel and I have a tiny flathead screwdriver, which you'll see here in a second will become extremely useful when we're uh, breaking apart the slab. So let's get a couple practice reps in and make sure we're feeling good about this. All right, so I'm gonna crack open a 2001 Topps Reggie Wayne. It's a PSA 6. It's basically worthless. Um, so the general philosophy when cracking these, at least from my experience, and I've done lots of these, hundreds and hundreds of these, is to get a good, kind of get a good centered angle at the top here, and you're gonna crack this, and the idea here is you want it to perfectly split if possible, but if not, it might split off to the side and we can kind of chip around it but you want to kind of be as centered as possible and you're just going to squeeze this thing as hard and as quick as you can to send that jolt, that crack, all the way through the slab. And there you go. There's the first one. See, that one didn't crack very well and we, we damaged the bottom of it. That's why we're doing practice reps. So one, one solution to that would be you kind of go to the bottom there and finish the crack. It's been a minute. <laughs> Harlan, I hope you're ready. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Get out of here. Let's try another one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not ready to slice over the mantle yet. <laughs> This is not funny. I shouldn't be laughing. <laughs> it's twenty thousand dollars. Let's try that again. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go a little higher up and kind of let that crack. So we have a 1992 DC Comics Wonder Woman. Yeah, you can see here when you pull it apart when you're not completely cut and you pull it, it starts to kind of move that edge a little bit. So you probably want to do a better job. There you go. Slide that apart. And that is how you do it. And that's how I got a PSA one. Had a hole in the card. So a lot of these cards come from collections that we buy. They were already graded. Uh, in some cases, like the 87 Flutie, I think I might've sent it in. Uh, but most of these are just from collections. So where to slice them? They're essentially worthless. It's good practice. Let's keep it high. There you go. We're getting the cracks. We're getting the cracks really nice, but they're not going all the way through the cut. There you go. So the idea there is you just want to, you just want it to split so you can pull it in two halves. So we're two for three. What gets me worried is that that card is so soft, and if it does not crack right, we're gonna be, uh, yeah. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be sweating. I brought a couple other, so I got a BGS slab here for you. I'm just gonna show you real quick what these look like. It's it's basically the same idea, but they all break differently. Obviously, there's different thicknesses. SGC is really tough, uh, but the Beckett I've probably cracked more Beckett slabs than I have any other. So this is a uh, 2001 Fleer Authority Billy Sylvester. This usually happens with the BGS slab it, it can crack all over the place if you're really good at what you do and you do this enough you can get it a, a pretty kind of seamless cut but they sleeve these inside here so you don't have to worry so much about damaging the card which makes it nice and easy so once you get that first cut done then you kind of go around the edges and you just kind of chip away and get get the seams all busted up and then this is perfect because then you get your little you get your screwdriver and you just start to ply it away and this BGS is by far the easiest to crack. Very rarely do you have an issue with that. All right, so I've got the mantle. Uh, we've had a few practice rounds. I feel like I could probably keep practicing for a couple hours, but I have never cracked something of this magnitude. I don't want to screw this up. I really don't want to screw this up, but it's game time. Let's, let's get it on. All right, so is this risky? 
It is absolutely risky, but if it was my card, I'd probably do the same thing. Harlan's thinking it's a thousand dollars. We have the potential of adding eight thousand dollars, and for them, they're thinking, you know what, this is going to a college education fund. So why not take a shot? But one question you might be asking is, is this normal? And the reality is, these are human beings that grade these cards. If you were to go to the doctor and you got a diagnosis on a condition, you'd probably go get a second opinion. You probably want to go see what another person said, another doctor said. It's the same way with grading cards. You just want a second opinion. And we're thinking, let's get it to SGC and see what their opinion is on this card. In this case, it's a $10,000 bonus for us if a decision works in our favor. Let's go take a shot. All right, one more look at this card. It seems like they put plastic, some sort of like penny sleeve on it, but I can't really tell. This is it. This is the real deal. I've been delaying the inevitable here for the last 10 minutes. Let's go. All right. I've done too many of these to know. It's, it's gonna work. Three, two, one. That's a good crack. So we just cracked this. Uh, it didn't make it all the way through, so I have to finish that cut right there, like you've seen on the other practice ones. I have to get that cut without it kind of shattering up into the card. That, that is the, this is the big moment here. That, that, that actually was nothing compared to what you have to do here. Got her. It is in a bag. It's, it's got a bag behind it. No damage. That was exhilarating, man. So last time I actually physically touched this card was when we pulled it out of its screw down in West Virginia to look at it, to feel it, to make sure it was real. And this is when we all thought, you know what, this actually could grade a one. Okay, it is in a card saver one. And uh, we'll walk you through the process of getting this over to SGC, kind of how we do things. But uh, my heart's back to its normal heart rate, so we're good to go. All right, he's safely in a card saver one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Are you seeing the pictures? I, did, I just saw it. <laughs> that first crack, that first crack had my heart pacing so much because it didn't go all the way through. And we had, I kind of had to work backwards underneath it to finish it. And I was so worried about chipping that bottom. But I got it. Everything's good. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, well, it's one, at least we're not dealing with like, a, you know, this isn't a, an eight that we're trying to get a nine out of. <laughs> so true. That may have been a little too much handshaking. You know? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. We're going, <laughs> worst case, it goes from an A to an A. L lessons learned here. This was super fun. So thanks for giving me the chance. I'll keep you posted along the, the next 72 hours. Woo! That was so fun. I want to do this every day. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get the submission done for the 52 Mantle. It's a very easy process for any of the grading companies, but obviously we're submitting through SGC. So standard card grading, what you do for, for SGC, they have a, a great repository. So you type in the card that you, you are looking up and you're looking up in 1952, number 311. You click that card, you add your declared value. That's important because based on what you think it's going to grade is how they're going to charge you. Their max charge on any card is $1,000. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put 25,000 just to be safe. And that's what they'll insure it at as well. Um, you can do a couple things here. If checked, your item will not receive a numeric grade. We're not doing that. Sometimes you'll wanna do that if it's just an autograph or things like that. We're gonna encapsulate even if it's altered. This is not an oversized item and it's a raw card grading. So the only card we're gonna put on this order, you can see over here, it tells you order number, total declared value, service fee is gonna be $1,000. We'll go ahead and click next. You roll through the process, super straightforward. Uh, this is gonna be a one to two day estimate. Usually they're standard grading turnaround time anyway. And then all you do from here is you click here to finish. Okay, and the last step here is you're gonna print your invoice. One's gonna go with the card, one's gonna go on the outer shell inside your package, and the last one for your records.
If you haven't noticed, we use lots of supplies. And to make your life easier, we give all those links and recommendations in the show notes below. And while you're down there, let us know what you think about this episode by clicking that like button. Now we just wait. But while we're waiting, what do you think this card grades? Here's some close-ups of the raw card. Do you think it comes back in SGC Authentic? Or do you think we get lucky and get the SGC one? Let us know in the comments below. Meanwhile, I'll try to focus on other things. Oh, I know. It's hard waiting, isn't it? It's coming. The UPS man will be here any minute. Yes, the mantle's been graded. Well, SGC has graded the card, and after 72 hours of waiting, it came back as an SGC authentic. Is it a slight bummer? Yes. But on the bright side, within four days of listing the card, it sold for $20,000. So in the end, it all worked out. Keep chasing. <laughs>